This Raspberry Pi 5 is booting from a super fast Samsung 1TB NVMe and it's overclocked to PCI Gen 3 speeds, which should accelerate just about every function on the device. And to really put it through its paces, I set up Frigate's home surveillance NVR, featuring a Coral USB Edge TPU and a generic webcam. And what's interesting is this whole setup is still only pulling about eight or nine watts, which is really power efficient. And so I'm gonna put the camera right in here and then go over to my terminal here to show you what it's doing. So that webcam is feeding a live FFmpeg stream into an RTSP server, which is on the Raspberry Pi. And we also are hosting Frigate on the Raspberry Pi. So if I go into the shot like this, then it should start recording automatically because we have person detection enabled. And there it is. So at only eight watts, this is quite the workhorse. And NVMe just makes everything faster. And just for a frame of reference, this LED light right here, which is supposed to be energy efficient, if I turn it on, it will start pulling over 30 watts. So that just gives you a sense of how energy efficient the Raspberry Pi is. Raspberry Pi has always had a thing for SD cards, dating all the way back to the Raspberry Pi 1. But the problem is they're slow, have limited storage capacity and lack reliability. Even this top of the line SanDisk Extreme running on the Raspberry Pi 5's upgraded SDR104 slot can only read about 80 megabytes per second. And the slot itself caps out at 104 megabytes per second. So naturally, our Pi users have been eagerly awaiting better alternatives. And the transporter himself has finally answered our prayers by bringing NVMEs to the Raspberry Pi 5. So I conducted a comprehensive performance analysis to find the absolute best setup out there by buying one of the fastest M2 NVMEs and running it on the most popular hats out there. I'll cover how to set them up, overclocking to PCI Gen 3 speeds, benchmark boot times, read write times, general purpose performance using Geekbench, as well as power efficiency. I also compared the RPi5 to its predecessors and uncovered a few enhancements that are definitely worth noting. I'll even throw the NVMe on an x86 board and compare the speeds. Before we dive deeper, I've got to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, JLC PCB. Now, let me share a little secret with you. My fascination with tiny tech and microcontrollers is growing by the day. It's incredibly exciting to see this domain evolve to a point where hobbyists like myself can transform a spark of imagination into a tangible production quality product without breaking the bank. JLC PCB is at the forefront of this revolution, empowering millions of creators and innovators around the globe to bring even their most ambitious projects to life. For anyone ready to start their journey into electronics manufacturing, JLC PCB is offering an exclusive $60 discount for all new customers. Just click the promo code link in the description below to get started. Let's unleash our creativity together and make something amazing with JLC PCB. So let's start with the Pi Moroni base. This piece of hardware hails from the UK, and there's a couple key things that I like about it. One is that the hat does not cover the SD card. It has a curved FPC cable that allows you to access the SD card. It also protects the NVMe by nestling it between the Pi and the base itself. It also comes with solid rubber feet so that it's stabilized when placed on a solid surface. Ultimately, what we're looking for is a sandwich like this. Let's start by adding the NVMe. The key to this is to come in at a 30 degree angle. Now what we wanna do is add one of these spacers here. We want the thick to be on the bottom just so it's elevated a little bit. And then we're gonna grab one of these screws. It's elevated, it looks good. And I already added uh, two standoffs here. I'm not gonna add all four because we're gonna be taking it off uh, pretty quickly, but two should do the trick for testing purposes. It tells you Raspberry Pi here, PCI here. So now we're gonna take this, we're gonna go like this. Okay, we're gonna grab some screws. Oh. Go like this. Can do it like one. It 
it's, it's stable, it's not going anywhere. And again, I can still get up that micro SD card. So I personally like that. Okay, and with the Raspberry Pi turned on, we should be able to connect and we should be able to see if the drive has been picked up. So we're gonna do LS, BLK, and we can see the NVMe right there at one terabyte. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and update the config. So we're gonna do raspi-config. We're going to go to update. We're going to go to advanced options. We're gonna to go to bootloader version. And we're gonna select a latest, use the latest version boot ROM software. We're also gonna go back to advanced options and we're gonna to go to boot order and we're gonna select Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and reboot. We're gonna log back in. Okay, we're gonna do Raspi config. We're going to update. We're also gonna do apt get upgrade. Okay, and then we're gonna do Raspi config. And we're gonna go to advanced options. We're gonna go to boot order. And now we're gonna select NVMe. Um, if available, right? Okay. And then one more thing is interface options. Let's enable VNC because we're going to want to use that in a second. And let's go ahead and reboot. So now the only problem is uh, we don't have the operating system on the NVMe. So I'm going to go over to VNC and I'm going to connect to a Raspberry Pi dot local and we're going to go to accessories then we're going to go to SD card copier we're going to select our micro SD card and then we're going to select for the two device the uh, Samsung 970 NVMe okay so let's go ahead and click start it's going to erase all the content on the NVMe we're going to select yes okay so we just wrote the operating system system to the NVMe and again guys if you get lost a step-by-step -step tutorial will be in the description below so what we're gonna do now is turn off the Raspberry Pi remove the micro SD card and see if it boots from the NVMe okay so out goes the SSD put that down here and then let's go ahead and boot this guy up So it looks like we're in our Raspberry Pi. We have uh, no SD card, only have the NVMe, and we are running from the one terabyte NVMe, so this looks good. So what we're gonna wanna do now is run some benchmarks so we can compare the other NVMe and the SSD. So one thing I wanna do right away is enable PCIe Gen 3. So to do that, I'm gonna edit boot, firmware, config.txt and at the very end of this file we're going to add this entry here dt param pcie x1 underscore gen 3 and then i think we need to reboot so i'm going to do reboot now okay so we can see here that pcie gen 3 is enabled because we see 8 gt per second so that looks good to me. So let's run a couple of tests here. And we can run this command here against the NVMe. Okay, and we got 806 megabytes per second. But I also want to see the boot time. So we're going to run this systemd hyphen analyze command. And we can see that it booted in 10 seconds. And basically, what we're going to see is for whatever reason, NVMe doesn't materially improve boot times. Unfortunately, you're still going to get a little over 10 seconds in most cases. Okay, and then there's this website here called Pi Benchmarks, and go ahead and execute this. Okay, so we got 44,450. Okay, so I also want to run Geekbench. So I'm going to download this uh, program called Pi Apps. That should help facilitate that. And then we will use VNC for the rest. So, if we go to Accessories, Pi Apps, should give us G 
Geekbench, I think Geekbench 6 probably. Now we should be able to go over here and do... Okay, so we got a 784 for the single core and a 1640 for the multi-core. And down here you can kind of see it broken out by the different tasks that were executed. Okay, so now we're going to look at the Pineberry hat drive bottom. This company is based out of Norway and they offer a number of custom hats, one for the Coral AI Edge TPU and a couple M2 hats that go on top and underneath the Raspberry Pi. They also have this sort of uh, minimalist um, housing for uh, some of these hat drives here which you could pick up. This is exposed right here. So I put these standoffs to kind of elevate it. You could put all four standoffs and they'll stand up properly, but that's enough to kind of keep it off the ground there. Um, so, okay, no micro SD, we have the NVMe. Let's go ahead and boot her up. All right, LSBLK, so we see the NVMe, no micro SD, that looks good. Okay, so I'll spare you from having to watch me go through all the benchmarks again. But basically what I did is I ran through that same series of benchmarks for read times, write times, boot times, Geekbench 6, and Raspberry Pi benchmarks. And I did that same series of tests for the Pi Maroni hat, the Pineberry hat, a standard micro SD on the Raspberry Pi 5, a standard micro SD on the Raspberry Pi 4, as well as the Zima Blade, which is an x86 board with the NVMe. Okay, so let's talk about the overall results of these tests. Let's start with the boot time. So interestingly, the NVMe doesn't drastically reduce the boot times. It seems like no matter what, you're going to get about 10 second boot times. Now one thing I will note is the Raspberry Pi 4 was benchmarked at around 25 seconds. So jumping from the 4 to the 5 does cut that boot time in half. But from there, it really doesn't matter if you use micro SD or alternative storage options. Okay, general read speeds. So a couple things. The Raspberry Pi 4 was using an older version of the micro SD slot and it was capping out at around 45 megabytes per second. Now just upgrading to the Raspberry Pi 5, you get a new micro SD slot protocol that doubles that read time to about 85 megabytes per second. But it's still kind of slow and you'll notice uh, those types of slow read times as you kind of uh, utilize tools that do a lot of disk operations. So getting the NVMe in there is going to show huge gains and you're going to jump from that 85 megabytes all the way to about 800 megabytes. So it's a factor of 10 increase in speeds. But what was really interesting is the Zima Blade, which again, it's a different setup. It's a x86 architecture, but it has a PCIe uh, port that supports Gen 2 speeds. Now Gen 2 speeds theoretically cap out at 500 megabytes a second, but it gave you access to four lanes of it, which equates to two gigabytes per second. And when I ran that HD Parm read test, I was able to pull about 1200 megabytes per second. So ultimately, you know, the Raspberry Pi 5, it has that single lane and you can get about 800 megabyte, megabytes down, but uh, it's gonna be limited. And some of these other SBCs open up more lanes. And even if the lanes are slower, they compound on each other. So if you have four lanes at a slower speed, you're still getting faster speeds at the end of the day. So it's something to think about. And this also shows up in the Pi benchmark scripts. Now this is a more involved script. It uses several different libraries in order to evaluate the performance of the Raspberry Pi. But basically putting the NVMe in there increases the score by like 3000 percent. It's crazy. So clearly you're getting huge performance gains uh, from having the NVMe in there. Now the Geekbench test is more focused on the CPUs. So having faster storage doesn't necessarily translate to a better result, but you can still see what we got here. If you have the NVMe in place, you do get the best scores. 
and the Raspberry Pi 5, even with a micro SD, will have, uh, will have twice as good a score as the Raspberry Pi 4. And one final note is I ran a test on the internal MMC storage on the Zima Blade, and it was slower than I expected. I think it was around 100 megabytes per second. So um, you would want to upgrade your other SBCs to fast NVMEs if possible. So ditching the micro SD card and using a super fast NVMe is definitely a great way to turbocharge your Raspberry Pi 5. Anyways, for more cool videos, check out this next video.